In this video, I'm going to tell you why the ERLC is completely worthless. It's been quite a week. It really has. I I uh, saw the uh, the news that the executive committee of the Southern Baptist Convention is forming a task force to sort of, you know, find out what the heck is going on in the ERLC, and the ERLC threw a hissy fit. I can't believe it. Oh, don't we trust the board of trustees? Don't we trust Russell Moore and all these people? They're brothers and sisters in Christ and all that. And the answer is a short no. We, we don't trust you. We don't trust you because we've seen years after year after year of nonsense from you. It's completely worthless. The ERLC does not represent the values of a typical Southern Baptist. And you might say, well, AD, you're not a Southern Baptist. Well, how do you know? Well, because I know a lot of Southern Baptists, and the reality is that Dr. Russell Moore is has been a disaster. His specialty is supposed to be ethics and, and, and religious liberty, I suppose, but his organization is puts out the worst of the worst kinds of nonsense. It's full of evangelical jargon that nobody understands the meaning of. It's just a bunch of ishy, squishy, ooey gooey gobbledygook and it's worthless even and, and then this is the big thing that people like to talk about they say well you know we need them because we need them to you know talk about abortion and stuff like that they're even bad on abortion let's just be honest they technically have the right position but it's the most limp-wristed soft-handed kind of position on abortion that you could possibly imagine it's the kind of position that will keep abortion legal always always and forever in the United States. Nobody takes the ERLC seriously. Nobody should take the ERA, or ERLC seriously. The ERLC, ERLC, I can't even talk. I'm so frustrated. <laughs> the ERLC should be disbanded immediately. It should be wiped off the face of the earth. It shouldn't exist. It should be destroyed, defunded, deplatformed, whatever you want to say, that's what the ERLC should do. Now, this is an article about that this is the kind of nonsense that they put out this is the ethics and religious liberty commission it's a very official looking logo here why our hearts matter when talking about abortion now it's a good title because our hearts of course certainly do matter at all times here's how the article by phoebe Cates starts november 18th last year nearly one in four women will have an abortion by the time they turn 45. 25 percent of women that comes from the Guttmacher institute this statistic is probably familiar and while statistics are useful for painting a picture of the world we live in we can't reduce people to statistics as christians we know that our god doesn't view us as a number instead he views us as a unique individual whom he has fearfully and wonderfully made nice use of a very popular verse there statistics can also help us understand what it's like to be in someone else's shoes for example 66% of women knew that abortion was wrong. 67% of women said that having an abortion was one of the hardest decisions of their lives. Women reported symptoms of depression, 14%, and guilt, 14%, shame, regret, self-hatred, feelings of worthlessness, feelings of being unworthy, love, drug or alcohol addiction, 9%, low self-esteem, anxiety, and thoughts or attempts of suicide, 6%. These reveal that most women don't need you to tell them that abortion is wrong. They know it is. God's word tells us that the law is written on our hearts so that when we sin, our conscience bears witness. What women with abortion in their past or who are considering abortion now need to hear is that Jesus came, conquered their sin, and offers healing and eternal life. That's what we all need to hear most. This is the ethics experts of the Southern Baptist Convention. Now, I tweeted in a very snarky way, but I was deadly serious that you can take this logic, this ironclad logic from the professor himself, Russell Moore, and apply it to pedos. That's what they call them in England, but here we call them pedos, pedophiles, pedophiles, people who have sex with children, right? Because guess what, my friends? Pedophiles know that having sex with children is wrong. Have you ever watched To Catch a Predator? Yeah, that's a great show. You should watch it. Hunt some clips on YouTube. Uh, uh, you know, Chris Hansen. I love Chris Hansen. That guy's great. He's kind of fallen off a little bit lately. But Chris Hansen, he interviews pedophiles. They catch him in a sting. They came over to some uh, little kid's house so that they could have sex with him. You know, little men coming to find a little boy to have sex with, a little girl to have sex with, and, and he interviews them. And most people actually sit and talk to him, if you can believe it. I think they think he's a police officer most of the time, so they sit and talk to him. But he asks them questions like, did you know it was wrong? Just like that, in that tone. And every one of them, to the man, absolutely knows 
that having sex with a child is wrong. Every one of them. Lots of times in this, they have guilt and shame about it. You can even see it in their faces. This, this honestly, this series was so compelling because you could see these people and it was just everyday people. They didn't look like pedos. They just looked like everybody. And they're, they're, you could see the, the shame and the guilt and the regret and the self-hatred. I even watched a show that was copycatting to catch a predator in England and they followed a few guys and a couple of them even killed themselves, committed suicide because they had been caught again committing buggery you know that's actually sodomy of a little kid they killed himself before he would get to go to prison again a lot of them are addicts you know a lot of them have low self-esteem anxiety problems popping pills problems with drugs problems with alcohol things like that they all have it right they knew it was wrong would any person in the right mind have the have the audacity to use this stupid logic with pedophiles. Pedophiles already know it's wrong. You don't have to preach against pedophilia. Could this work in any other sin? No, it doesn't work on any sin. You must preach the full counsel of God, including where it says you shall not kill, including where it says that anyone who causes a little one to stumble, they ought to go drown themselves in the river. In fact, in, in, in the ocean. That's how the Bible talks. That's how the ERLC talks about abortion. Can you believe it? They, they even attempt suicide. Meanwhile, the Bible says that if you cause one of these little ones to stumble, it's better for you to be drowned in the ocean. It's better for you to be killed, millstone hung around your neck, and drowned in the ocean. That's how the Bible talks about this. When you cause a little one to stumble. What do you think it, it's going to say when you, when you kill a little one before it even comes out of the womb? And you say, where's the grace? Where's the grace, Adam? Well, there is grace. There's grace for those who repent and believe in the kingdom of God, believe in Christ. There's grace for those who, who repent because they know the kingdom of God is at hand. And there's, and, 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 and there's judgment for those who don't change their mind and do th God's way instead of their way and have put their faith and their trust and their belief in Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. There's grace for those people. But part of that grace is hearing that message, repent or perish, from the pulpit. And this article, this article here, would have you not hear it from the pulpit. Let me read to you what this article says. It says, So you don't have to post internet memes and videos, display bumper stickers, or make rude comments to tell me how terrible abortion is, nor do you need to shout it from the street corners or the pulpits. I know. My mother knows. Over two-thirds of women know. This is the kind of garbage that the ERLC puts out. It's just, it's just, it, it, it beggars belief. It, it really beggars belief. Men, we need to have a talk. Your church supports the ERLC. We need to have a talk. There is no reason for the ERLC in its current form to exist. This this uh, this task force, I don't know if it's going to produce anything. I'm highly suspicious of it. I know that a lot of people on the task force have the right intentions in mind. I don't think it's going to amount to anything. And you can see the hissy fit the ERLC is throwing. Oh, how could, how could you? How could you? And, of course, they are against transparency. Of course, they don't want anyone to know what they're up to except their inner circle of shady scammers. This is ridiculous. I mean, honestly, like... Anyone who's, everyone and their mother right now, Thabiti Anyabwili, all these people, all the typical people, all the people that are the prophets back of, in the day that would say peace, peace when there was no peace, all the prophets like that, the fake, phony, baloney hirelings are coming to the ERLC's defense. Oh, we support Russell Moore. Yeah, you know what? It's cool to support Russell Moore, but also insist on transparency, insist on cooperation here. You see, here's the reality. Russell Moore does not want you to know what he's up to. Russell Moore does not want you to know what he's up to. Russell Moore does not want you to know who funds him. He doesn't want you to know the, his, his agenda and his private meetings and all of this stuff. Oh, he, yeah, he, he cares a lot about Trump's private meetings. Oh, yeah, you know, this is a matter of moral consistency. <laughs> what a joke. Man, we have to have a talk. If you're conservative and you're in the SBC, you need to stop paying these people. Just stop. Just stop participating that's why there's no despair baby no despair in 2020 because you have control over your fund there is nothing in the bible that says that you need to fund an organization like the erlc oh there's things in the bible about funding your pastors absolutely there are things in the bible about we ought to support those who are bringing the gospel to the nations there is nothing 
in the Bible that says you need to fund an organization like the ERLC, I implore you, stop doing it. Just stop. It's easy. Just stop. Anyway, I was hoping to have a more feel-good message going into the weekend, but hey, that's okay. That's okay. We're going to probably talk a little bit more about this because I'm sure this weekend is going to be a doozy with ERLC supporters and all this kind of nonsense, but but there's no reason. I mean, even the one issue where most conservatives agree with the ERLC's official position, they're even worthless on that. Absolutely worthless. ERLC uh, gets abortion wrong. They, they get it wrong. Yeah, they don't want babies to be killed, but they... They don't want to treat it like it's murder. They just don't believe it's murder. Guess what, guys? Pedophilia is actually not as bad as abortion in both our death penalty offenses. But 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 let's just be honest here. Abortion's more serious. Abortion is actually something that's way more serious. And there are way more people in the United States that have abortions than have sex with kids. And so you would think that we should hear from our pulpits a lot more about abortion, a lot more forceful words about abortion than we would about pedophiles. But the reality is here that this organization, this group wants you to soft hand that, wants you to soft hand abortion. And we're supposed to expect that these are the guys that are going to Washington and, and being the hard, the hard hitters with those, with those politicians and they're gonna, they're gonna drive our agenda. Yeah, right. I got, I'm gonna calm down and have myself a nice Friday afternoon hard seltzer water. Have a good day. I hope this is helpful. God bless.